Booyakasha! It is your boy Isaac here back again <laughs> for, for another free agent video. Uh, just kidding, guys. That wasn't Ali G. I know you guys may have thought that was Ali G. Surprise, it's uh, Isaac, Ken, and Ali. Um, I know you guys were all shocked there. Whoa. Uh, we're back for our free agent uh, update video. What do we call Off season this? recap? Off season recap. I feel like baby. I just want to say I feel like Ali G hasn't been relevant in like fifteen years. <laughs> you know, Am I feel I like you were that? never like, relevant. So the fact that you're ago. coming for Ali G right now is kind of kind of crazy to me. So you know, losers. I think my grandma I, not, not to LG. preview the episode, but I think losers should talk last. How about that? So me and Ken will start it off, and then maybe you'll get a couple words in at the end. We'll see where we go from here. Are you gonna do like Eddie Murphy next? I uh, never heard of that guy. Um, so <laughs> what this is, if just in case you guys didn't watch our free agent prediction video, we basically predicted uh, the top. What was it? Ta- top ten free agents. Twenty five. Top twenty five free agents. Uh, where they were going? Uh, we guessed the amount of money, the amount of years, the AAV. And we put it all on a spreadsheet that hopefully uh, our editor will put in right now. Um, as you can see, there is a Ken, Isaac, Ollie. Um, and uh, yeah, we basically had a lot of fun with this. Just put in our predictions. And I think we can finally make this video now that free agency is basically over. I would say we were waiting for Carlos Correa to sign. Um, but, you know, he could have signed with six other teams in the time that we recorded this video. So we wanted to make sure it was definitely over. Um so, yeah, let's jump right into it. How about that? So, first, um, actually, you know what? Let me ask you how you are first, being a good host. Ken, how are you? Uh, thank you, Isaac. Thank you for swinging into me before, Ollie. Um, first of all, the, 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 is anyone cringing? Like, Isaac's Ali, a, Ali G impression. I don't, I don't personally know Ali G, and I never watch his videos. So, um, I, can't tell, <laughs> I, can't tell, I can't tell if that was good or not, um, but if, for it, those it watching. Wasn't. It was not as bad as I anticipated it oh, would wow, be, I okay. say. Like, I, I was expecting it to be so much worse like, than I, it was. You, was know, actually, you know where I think like, I fell short was the material? If I had had more material, material pre-written, yeah. I think it might have come out a little smoother. It's more like the you know football lad kind of cultures. What's like that is more. It's like it's a little okay. bit deeper than you were doing. Ali, Sasha Baron Ali Cohen also said that voice. he knows French. So <laughs> um, <and laughs> look where that got us in Montreal. Uh, what I I said anyway, you know, you know, I'm not feeling great. French um, you know, uh, <laughs> maybe next time you guys can look forward to Isaac and Ali. Maybe a debate episode and doing an Ali G impression. But for today, I'm excited to get into it. The off season has kind of come to a close. We're looking forward to the baseball season. It's right around the corner um and yeah i'll swing it to ollie how you feeling buddy i'm great uh celtics and bruins still at the top of their respective leagues best Boston, team in the nhl here, and Boston. best team in the nba we're about to have a three title season boys <laughs> celtics bruins and Sox in one year just like <laughs> what was it 2007 get ready so get ready get leafs out now it's happening so you brought up boston sports i'm gonna have to bring up new york sports how about them brooklyn nets baby detroit pistons great team but Kyrie hey dropping 40 points i mean yeah you expect to win that game huh uh, you know what I, I wasn't gonna come for the net i was gonna give you claps man the knicks beat a great celtics key team last night that would have been a better transition than coming for the brooklyn nets um the brooklyn nets are four seed we're chilling we're absolutely chilling just you know treading water until kd is back but you're your Knicks, man. That that was an exciting game. Overtime win over the Boston fucking Celtics. Um, RJ Barrett hits a clutch three at the end. Um, just in all the 37 points from Julius Randle. He needs to be an all-star. Um, I'm not a Knicks fan, but you know, I gotta respect the respect the game. And you know, I, I think why you watch so much Knicks basketball is because when it, at the end of the day, they're an exciting team to watch, and you can't get that they fulfillment are. from watching the, the 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 Brooklyn Nets. I can't. Like, actually. What do you got? You got you got Kyrie and and KD having ninety percent of the action, like chucking uh, shots. N- abs- like, you're forgetting like, a Nick Claxton only, who's averaging twenty six points and eleven rebounds over the last ten games. This guy, twenty three years old, defensive player of the year candidate. The only player, what? Yeah, go on. The only player I respect is Wantanabe. He's the only legend on that team. I'm not gonna lie. Okay. It's just, I feel like Knicks fans are just insecure about their own teams. Like, Nets fans, we can appreciate good basketball. Yeah, the Knicks are fun to watch. So are the Brooklyn Nets. You know, I enjoy good basketball. That's a that's a really crazy spin, Ken. That's, that's And you guys spin. all wish you had Peyton Pritchard on oh your my, team. All right, the let's get this moving. Oh baseball, Ollie, baseball. Losers talk last. Okay, <laughs> so um, 
I, 700 winning percentage is my baseball. response to that. Go ahead. Go I, don't, ahead. I don't even know what you're talking about. So, baseball. so basically, baseball. So basically, um, our list. I guess I'll give the list really quick here. We had Anthony Rizzo, Abreu, Kershaw, Degrom, Verlander, Turner, Josh Bell, uh, Mitch Haniger, Jameson Tyone, Aaron Judge, uh, Jansen Contreras, Yoshida, Bogarts, Nimmo, Sanga, Bassett, Correa, Syndergaard, Rodon, Swanson, Martinez. That's JD. Uh, no longer a uh, Red Sox. Phew. Uh, Benintendi, Eovaldi, also no longer a Red Sox. And Trey Mancini. So that was the the list that we decided was the top twenty five guys. Um, I'm going to start this episode off hot. Start it with a bang. Let's let's give uh, our our point system. Like I mentioned before, was guess the team, guess the money, guess the AAV. Um, so I'm going to start right away with uh, the three of us. The one who guessed the least amount of points. Um, and that is Mr. Oliver Catran in third place. So um, I hear they don't give out bronze medals in this sport. So unfortunately for you, Oliver, um, you kind of fell short. Um, but the bright side is you only fell short by one point to Ken Suzuki, um, which, you know, still very, very short of your boy Isaac Springer in first place. So um, feels good. Uh, Ali knowing the least amount of baseball, me knowing the most amount of baseball. Um, you know, it, it, it feels good to be at the top Very dubious and, um, I can't wait till I do Very it again next claims. year in predicting everything I predicted. Um, what are your thoughts based on this list? The point system, uh, Oliver, I'll swing it to you first since I feel bad for you. <laughs> I'm just curious. Who do you think, uh, do you know who Christy Mathewson is? I'm just curious. Christy Mathewson? Yeah. He's Isaac? a pitcher. Yeah. He's a pitcher from like 1930. Yeah. What are you going to say now? <laughs> what are you... Sure. Okay. That's cute. <laughs> 1930, 1930. That's great. Well, first of all, I th- I'm pretty sure I said Judge is going back to the Yankees. I think that's what we Good remember pick. happening in in the video. I think you I said, said Judge, Judge Dodgers. Let's get Yankees, that straight so. for the people that didn't no, watch that, the video. I don't think that's. I think if we look at the record, that's probably. Uh, I'll debatable. put in a clip of Ollie saying uh, Dodgers right here. Aaron Judge, my friends, is going to the L.A. Dodgers at eight years, three ten. Okay, so stop. Thank you. I have it on the spreadsheet. It says some big surprises eight for three ten to the Dodgers off season. Some very exciting moments. My king Benny Biceps Boston born and bred going to the White Sox. Not born and How's bred. Born in Cincinnati. Southside Thank you. Correction for Benny. You don't know that. Yes, I do. Born and heading to Chicago in the Midwest, where he is destined to die on somehow getting what was that a five year contract? I don't know how that happens for this guy, but hey. I'm happy he's getting some money. I'm happy he's getting a big payday. Another big surprise, uh, the man from Ken's home country, Masataki Yoshida, coming to my Red Sox, which nobody, including me, saw coming. But I'm stoked about that because he's a hell of a good left fielder, and he gets on base a lot. Those are my two big shockers of this offseason. What about you guys? Well, I mean, we didn't even get there yet, but yeah. (laughs) Ollie kind of jumped the gun there. If we're doing surprises now... I thought you said. I thought you said. No, surprises. I didn't. But that's fine. I, you can. You can. Uh, we can bag those up, package them. You know, keep them for later. Keep them in the side there. Ken, what are your thoughts about uh, these players? Where they landed? Uh, what are your thoughts on the rankings of uh, Isaac in first, you in second, yeah, Ali in last? I'll answer. What are your thoughts? I'll answer this question uh, like you want it to be answered, not Ali jumping ahead, <laughs> saying his own thing that no one can understand. <laughs> but so. What? So yeah. So Isaac coming in first was definitely a surprise. Um, I. Definitely, even you uh, predicted me and Ollie to you know battle it out for first. But Isaac just comes in. There's some there's some crazy picks in here by Isaac um, that we'll get to later. That he'll probably gloat about later. That um, that I'm just absolutely shocked he even came close to getting right. Um, I missed on some just a few dollars off here and there. We gave ourselves a five million dollar uh, range to get it to get it right. So if I don't know. Say Rizzo signed for thirty-four million, and I had thirty-two. We counted that as right. Uh, but you know, I, Isaac just came in and su- shocked the world. Um, I'm surprised Ollie. I guess I'm not surprised that Ollie uh, got so many wrong. Um, even when we're doing the video, I thought Ollie was being a little too um, too cheap with the with the money. I thought he was a little short on the dollar sign uh, of most of the free agent predictions he made. We'll get to all that later, but yeah, surprise, yeah. surprise. I mean, not not knowing the market is um, you know is a fatal flaw for Oliver Katran. Um, I mean, but you know what I think it actually plays into this is that he is such a Yankee hater that his inner Yankee hater cannot. Like, just chill out for a second while he's trying to predict where Aaron Judge is going to go. No one in their right mind predicted Aaron Judge actually to the Dodgers. 
Like, <laughs> I mean, if we're being realistic here. So, like, you just want to see the Yankees fail so bad and miserably that you will let it cloud your judgment, which says a lot about you as a person. Isaac, I don't think this conversation is what our viewers are clamoring for really? right now. I feel like we're getting off topic. I just want to make sure that we're giving our fans the best content possible. You guys seem to be kind of diverting the discussion into this kind of unproductive <laughs> You're right. direction. Okay. Let's get it back on track <laughs> and talk about some signings. I mean, let's talk about baseball here. Okay. Let's talk about so, baseball. I mean, that's all what right, I'm here for. Right, you guys want to right, talk about all baseball. All right, I'll transition. Don't worry. Uh, we're going to lay off the roast a little bit. Um, and we're just going to get into it. So the first thing I wanted to talk about is um, we're going to do a top five list out, out of these big 25 free agents. Like, who do we think was the most influential to the team or the biggest money or just make your own top five list? I think we all did. We did that, right? Yes, we sir. made our own top five list. And I think I think it's fair to um, explain it, you know, who you have on the top five and why you have in the top five. Um, so I'm going to swing it to Ken first. Give me your top five. Okay, and not in any particular order. Um, or should we do one by one, or, or should I give my full five? You could go, you know, you know what would be an interesting way of doing this is each giving our five, each giving our four. I like that idea. All right, all right. That's a great idea. Um, Ken, my, your number five. So my, my number five, um, not too interesting, but still notable in my opinion, was Brandon Nimmo going back to the Mets uh, for eight years, $168 million. Um, Not surprised at all that he went back to the Mets. I'm just surprised at the years the length of this contract and the amount of this contract. I did not think uh, eight years, 168 was in the cards for the Mets to retain their own center fielder. Um, I was shocked by the money value and Stevie Cohen, as we saw all around uh, with the Mets moves, he was ready to cut the paycheck and cut the paycheck he did with Brandon Nimmo. That surprised me. Like it. Ollie. You know what? My number five was Mr. Kodai Senga. Going to the Mets. Maybe you guys saw that coming, but I really did not. I thought he'd be going out west for sure. This seems like a classic L.A. Angels, L.A. Dodgers signing to me. But Mr. Steve Cohen, look at this man. Just like you said with Nemo, he will just deal out the money for anybody. And I think Senga's going to be gnarly in Queens next season. That's a great yeah. signing. My number five is uh, Yoshida, actually. I, I think this this um, signing is the saving grace of the Red Sox that are, after losing Bogarts, are a pretty barren team, um, I honestly. And I, I think they really needed some excitement, some some reason to purchase season tickets. And I think Yoshida is that guy. So um, I, I I think 18 mil a year is is a little high for a for, you know an international player that's basically un, in, unproven in the MLB. So dishing out a hundred million dollars to this um, to this 90. this fellow here. Oh, I mean it's ninety, but it's around a hundred. Um, but yeah, basically a hundred. Basically a hundred. But that I mean, I just think that's a big price to pay, and I think that'll definitely fill some seats at Fenway. So I like the move, and I think that the Red Sox needed this in this offseason, or this would have been an ultimate failure of an offseason for the Red Sox. Yeah, Ken. Um, my number four is uh, also Masataka Yoshida to the Red Sox. Same with you. Um, you kind of nailed all the points. I don't really have to go in depth about this, but I was surprised that. I, well, let me just say this. I was surprised that the Red Sox went after this guy given the other moves they made or the lack of moves they made. Uh, I'll get into the Red Sox stuff later. Hint, hint. But, yeah, surprise, surprise. Ollie, you're number four, good sir. Mr. Dansby Swanson going to the Cubs. The reason this surprised me, it's an important signing. surprised me because I don't really see the Cubs as major contenders in the NL next season. They're kind of boxed in behind the Cardinals, Brewers, Juggernauts, they don't have that much young talent coming up, but they go out and get Dansby Swanson, lock him out for a long time. It's a, it's a smart signing. It's a big signing. It's gonna If it doesn't work out, it's going to ruin them financially for years. But I really thought he was going to go back to the Braves or maybe to the Angels or something. And Chicago kind of swoops in, I think, out of nowhere. None of us predicted that and locks him up for seven years. Again, solid signing, but not what I saw yeah. coming. Okay, I mean, and and necessarily this doesn't have to be like surprise signings. It can also just be like influential. Like for my next guy, I have uh, Rodon. I think that is a very influential signing by the Yankees. Um, I think he was other than Verlander and Degrom the the third best, um, you know, number one starter on the market, and he is very capable. And he had so much depth to the Yankees rotation. Um, and, and he transitions this Yankees rotation into being what I call the best in baseball and I, I don't know if many people would disagree with me uh, possibly Ali um, but um, yeah I mean I think Rodon was really important for the Yankees and I think there were some you know conditions you hear that that he said he wasn't signing unless judge signs oops maybe a little hint um, but um, it's really important that the Yankees added a piece because if they don't add a piece 
Uh, other than Aaron Judge, you're looking at they're running it back with the same exact team as last year. So I think that was a really influential signing by the New York Yankees. I like that. Um, for my third most notable free agent signing of the offseason, I have Xander Bogarts going to the San Diego Padres. Um, the team is, yes, surprising. I didn't think the Padres were going to be in on another shortstop, but also the money. So I had $140 million predicted. Isaac had 168 uh, and Ollie had 132. So we were all in that 150 million range. He ends up signing for 280 million dollars. Goddamn near 300 million for 11 where. years. So where. that 100% surprised me. I'm su- I'm sure it surprised both of you. Xander to the Padres. What, what a move. Yeah, and so glad to get him out of the Yankees division. I I that that guy was just a thorn in our side. He I it, it felt like he was getting a base hit every time he was up at some points in the season. Really underrated player, and I actually like really hope he does well in San Diego. I, I out of all the Red Sox, like he, like I really respect him. I really Me respect too. him. Ali, I had Trey Turner going to the Phillies, another shortstop. This signing is crazy to me, just because of how long they locked him up for. It's eleven years of Trey, and you guys know he's pretty much thirty years old now. So we know where he's going to be at age forty-one, playing something for the Phillies, unless they. Release him. I just didn't think he would get that many years. Obviously, he was probably the, I mean, a top three player on the market this off season. and this turns the Phillies from, like, I think the top five team in the NL to maybe the top three team in the NL. Um, serious contenders in the NL East now. I see them as another playoff team next year because they were such a shock last year, reaching the World Series on 86 wins out of nowhere. But now with Turner, they've legitimized what happened last season. Philly has said last season was real. We believe in what we've built here, and this is a signing that confirms that, confirms what we've done in Philadelphia. So it's a bold, big balls, big move signing to get Turner. We all kind of saw it coming, but still a, it's a big dick move. I like, I like That's how you describe need. that, and I totally agree. He, he's actually on my list too, but um, not on number three. Uh, for number three, I had uh, Jacob deGrom. Uh, I think why I don't have him higher is because I don't think – he influences like the team like enough to make them a playoff team. I have struggled to find those words. But, you know, I think it's an important signing. Obviously, he's, when healthy, the best pitcher on MLB, and it's not even close. Um, 5, 185, uh, 37 AAV. It's a huge contract. Um, you know, Mets fans very salty about it, um, which I, I see why. He didn't even listen to their offer. But I think DeGrom um, is going to have a new start in Texas, maybe a little less pressure in the New York media. Uh, maybe he can relax, pitch well, and hopefully he doesn't get injured. And but I still don't think this turns them into a playoff team, right? Like I, I really still don't see this, see them, you know, being a playoff team. So that's why I have them a little lower than maybe number one or two. But yeah, Jacob Degrom, number three, Ken. Okay, now my number two is also Trey Turner uh, to the Phillies for eleven years, three hundred million. Um, I guess I can add another point that Trey Turner, he signed for 11, 11 years. Uh, he's 29 years old. Xander also signs for 11. But compared to Xander, I'm a little worried about, about the 11 years more with Trey Turner because of his uh, style of play. Um, obviously, he relies heavily on his legs, uh, his speed, uh, and playing a shortstop position. He's not too great at. He's, he's a solid defender. He can play the position, but it'll be interesting to see where he moves uh, later in his career. And um, with Xander, I feel like the 11 years doesn't affect him, affect him that much because he's such a great hitter. He's a pure hitter, and he can. I feel like he can just slap balls around all over, um, hit doubles for days until he's 40. Um, with Trey Turner, I'm a little bit more worried, but yeah, 11 years definitely shocked me. Phillies lineup, that's gross. Phillies. Disgusting. Yeah, my number two, I went with your big signing of the season, Carlos Rodon to the Yankees, that big six-year contract. Ah, ah, this hurts my soul. <laughs> this hurts my soul. To Let me hear it, Ollie. Let me hear it. Makes me happy because I'll, I'll probably see him pitch sometime next summer, which is great whether in Boston or Yankee Stadium, but I'm just sad that he is on the other team because this man is an absolute machine. Ken did a really, really strong video about Rodon, which I suggest you guys check out. Link in the description. Chance. None of us saw him going to the Yankees. I saw him going to the Angels of all teams. Um, but you guys locked him up, you know? Credit to Cashman, the first good signing wow, of his tenure. Wow, 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 wow. So <laughs> I'm so used to him signing like 45-year-old catchers. Um, that's amazing. Name one and... over 35 catcher he signed. 
Rodon is now, I think, probably the top <laughs> pitcher uh, on your staff, unless Cole decides to stop giving up so many home runs. So, yeah, great job. Great job. Great job. Yeah, left uh, I just wanted to quickly guys. say the the Angels thing. Um, I, I could have seen him going to the Angels as well. And what are the Angels doing? I mean, you have one year left of Otani, and maybe this is a little preview for later, but this is what you guys are doing with your Isaac offseason? Him ha- Isaac has him as the loser of the offseason. Mean, maybe, maybe not. Okay, anyway, I'm, this guy's <laughs> already been talked about, so I have Trey Turner number two. Um The only thing I'm going to say about him, he slides very, very coolly. And that's all I'm going to say because you guys already covered everything. Um, Number one free agent signing, most influential, whatever you want to talk about. Um, I'm going to just give mine really quick because it's it's the obvious one. It's Aaron Judge. I mean, he he is the man. He is the captain of the New York Yankees. Um, This needed to happen. This absolutely needed to happen for baseball, for Yankees fans. Um, If Aaron Judge wasn't a Yankee for the rest of his career, it would have been the ultimate systematic failure of the New York Yankees. And honestly, baseball. It would have been a failure of baseball because he is the type of Yankees legend that that is the face of baseball that will be remembered forever. Like Jeter, like Reggie Jackson, like Mantle, like like Lou Gehrig, like Ruth. Um, He is that type of player. And if the Yankees didn't sign him, I really don't know what it would have happened. Uh, it would have been miserable for all of us here at Bleacher Boys Media, um, and it would have been miserable for a lot of Yankees fans. So glad he's back. They captained him, um, and yeah, go go Hal Steinbrenner. Um, yeah, I agree with you. I didn't have Aaron Judge just because I knew that someone else would have him. Uh, my number one pick, Isaac kind of already covered it, but it's Jacob DeGrom to the Texas Rangers. Um, I'm surprised at the years of this, the length of this contract. Five years for a guy that's 34, I think, um, and hasn't really been staying healthy for the past few years. Um, Jacob DeGrom, obviously the the best pitcher in the league, um, but for five years, how many? I think we all had him going right two, three years to the Mets. DeGrom, Isaac, I had, uh, I had Texas you had him go two to the years, Texas, but you had two years. Okay, I mean, like, I'm surprised. Million. Yeah, I'm surprised the Texas Rangers went to the fifth year. Um, surprised at how the negotiations with him and the Mets turned out. Uh, Steve Cohen really didn't give it a full push to sign his guy. And Jacob deGrom really, it, it looked like he really wanted to get out of New York. So surprised at all the all the stuff that went on. But deGrom, five years. Hopefully he can be a good mentor to the to the young guns they have in the system. So it's a, I think yeah. it's an influential signing. Ollie? Good takes, boys. My number one was the guy who is one of the biggest stories of the offseason for many controversial reasons, Carlos Correa. I have him there mainly because of all the hoops and jumps he went through to get signed. You know, if you guys have been following the news, you know he was almost locked up by the Giants, then maybe locked up by the Mets, and finally on a great anticlimax went back to the Minnesota Twins of all teams. So I got to think Carlos Correa is very disappointed by this offseason. Um... I'm happy that he's playing for a team that's going to finish in fourth place and lose 100 games probably because uh, the last thing I want to see is Correa have any success whatsoever. Agreed. We're with you. So this is a victory a victory for Ten. baseball all around to see Correa, you know, he's going to while away a few years in some backwater and hopefully get injured again. Well, not hopefully get injured, but hopefully that's crazy. bat 100 and strike out 300 times. And the point is Correa wow. is now more irrelevant than he's been in years, and that's the win for baseball. Okay, for I hate Carlos Correa too, but uh, the injury thing is crazy, That's Ollie. crazy, I mean, Ollie. Ollie, face, cancel sorry, Ollie. Sorry, sorry, sorry. My face is literally the oh thumbnail, Ken. Remember that. My face right there is literally the thumbnail. That's can crazy. I, can I get a quick word in here? So, yeah, go ahead. A couple days ago, we were talking, me, you, and uh, me, Isaac, and Ollie were on a phone call to discuss our plans for the upcoming videos. At the end of it, Isaac had to leave for class. He left. Me and Ollie were still chatting uh, maybe 10, 15 what, what, minutes wait, wait, afterwards. What's, what's and going Ollie on brings, what you... brings a situation up um, also <laughs> also praying for an injury to a player. I'm not going to name oh the player, God. but I was really shocked to no, hear that. No, we didn't. I didn't. But what? I was like, Ollie, there's when? no way. And then he finally, after I reacted the way I did, Ollie retracted Judge? his statement and said, okay, fine, going. that's too far. I shouldn't have said that. But for him to come on this show again, oh, this is very familiar. <laughs> for him to come on this show again to the public and say on air, Altuve, who is I talking about? Um, this, I, is an, this is this crazy. is a non, this, this is a non-story unless you say a name. This is a non-story unless you say a name. Who was I talking? Was it 
Jan- what was this I, is a non-story Jan- unless you say a name. It's a story because all he remembers think, exactly what remember. I'm talking about. I don't remember who it was, and I, my memory's so there's, bad. Yeah. There's just so for, many players for, he wishes injury on, he can't remember which but one. But for him to, this is a recurring is it Donaldson? thing. Like this, for him to come back on the show and say Korea, is it Josh to Donaldson? wish injury on Korea is crazy. It's probably Josh Donaldson. We can move on. Um, okay, can- no, hashtag no, cancel I, Ollie. I just want to say, Ken, you gave a fist bump when he said that, and I said, really? Because you're a big Carlos Correa fan. You were the one <laughs> preaching for him on the Yankees, so I don't know how how you can come on I here and a, say something like that. I gave a fist bump saying I don't want to see Correa succeed, not because not of his injury, but 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 you do because you wanted him on the Yankees so badly. I don't obviously if he's on the Yankees, Yankees I root for anyone on not on the Yankees. I'm not rooting for success. Mm, that's a good spin. Anyone not on the Yankees, you would say that. Okay. What? Yeah, look at this that's man. Crazy. He's the king of spin. Spin doctor right here. Spin yeah. doctor. Yeah. Spin Hashtag doctor. cancel Ollie right now. Tweet it out, guys. That's crazy. Everyone Hashtag tweet it out. Doctor. I'm gonna go that's check crazy. the tweets after this episode. All right, live. all right. I, yeah, I gotta get this. I I, we're bringing the spice, but I got I gotta get this back in line. Um, <laughs> let's transition a little bit. We we talked a little bit about it already, but. You know, there's teams like the New York Yankees that fared pretty well this offseason. There's teams like other teams that didn't fare so well this offseason. Um, what we're going to do is just going to name a couple teams or one team that, that we thought won, one team we thought that lost the offseason, um, and give our thoughts on this team's future or what they're going to do and if they're a playoff team. or Wait, maybe we save that for the other video? I think we save that for the other video. But we're just going to say who won the offseason um, and who lost the offseason. So, Ollie. Who won the off season? That's a oh, great. Obviously, it was the Oakland Athletics with their brilliant trade for <laughs> Shea Langliers. No, uh, the Rangers won the off season. That's pretty clear. The Rangers just mm-hmm. completely ballered up. They signed all the good pitchers, and they have Degrom and Evaldi and Heaney and probably the Heaney. best pitching depth in the AL right name now. We don't know if it's Heaney? going to. That's crazy. What? I yeah, they signed him, bro. I just wouldn't even include him yeah. in that name. Yankee fans in, in understand. Well, Odorizzi is just it's just like a, they got a thick rotation now. It's thick. Perez, Gray, it's like got some meat in it's it. Kim too. Kardashian. And um I think DeGrom is just a huge dub in himself. Yeah, it's like Kim Kardashian action. And it might not pay off. All these guys could get injured or they could just be terrible. Um it's a it's a chance. There are a lot of them are over thirty. But if that works out, if that works out, oh my god, what an upside. What an upside. Can you imagine that? Rangers winning 100 games behind a six-man rotation like DeGrom 15 wins, Evaldi 10 wins. It could be so gnarly. Do you see them out. coming out of that so division? We'll that like a little side talk here. I could see them definitely fighting for a wild card. I mean, it's tough to unseat the Astros, but definitely fighting for a wild card with the Mariners and other teams. Can I ask a couple questions? What besides Degrom? What moves do you think you named a few players that were already on the Rangers? What uh, what off season moves did they make that you know that made them the winner of the off season besides Degrom? Oh, it's the pitching signings. It's Ivaldi, it's Heaney, it's Odorizzi, and it's uh, Degrom. It's those. It's just the influx of starting pitching that you bring in, which was their biggest weakness last season. You know, they had a serious besides Martin Perez, they had a black hole of starting pitching, which had they couldn't get innings. And um, you can't have Dane Dunning and Glenn Otto going out there two out of five days. So they just addressed their biggest need and addressed it better than anybody's addressed a need in years. And they still have a lot of you know potential in their lineup too. I just think it's a, a team with a lot of upside if it all works out. You don't think so? No, You're I down mean, on the Rangers? I'm down on the uh, – Isaac's mic is muted, so I'll let him know now. I see the angle is what I was saying. I see yeah, the angle. I, I see what you're saying, but I think the, the key word you used there was upside. Um, it's just a lot of question marks that ha- that like yes, they have talent, um, but there's a lot of question marks in that lineup. I don't know if the pitching moves they made moves the needle that much um, to push them over the edge, but we'll we'll see. Yeah. Okay, Ken, your team that won the off season. Go. My team that won the off season is obviously uh, the New York Mets. Um, for the second consecutive year, in my opinion, they won the we, they won the off season. Um, they made huge moves at the top end talent. Brandon Nimmo they retained. Edwin Diaz they retained. They went out and got Verlander, Kodai Senga, Jose Quintana. Um, 
I mean, they got these names here. I'm just going to read off a couple names here, a few names here, that they signed for two, one to two years that really defined their offseason, in my opinion. Yes, they got the big, end, big high-end talent, but I think this here, Jose Quintana, Omar Navarez, Adam Adovino, David Robertson, Tommy Fan. These guys, they also traded for Brooks Raley. These guys made... Um, uh, these guys make the the Mets so much deeper, um, just just smoothing out the edges, solidifying the depth. Um, these moves, I feel like, on top of the on top of the big moves of Senga and Verlander, um, outweigh the subtractions of Degrom, Bassett, Walker, um, Trevor May, Seth Lugo. I think they kind of infuse the roster with better and younger talent. Um, and yeah, if if this if this especially it depends on Verlander and uh, Scherzer's health, but if these guys stay healthy, man. Whew, th- this team is complete, even without the Correa signing. Whew. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I have to agree there. I uh, wanted to go a little bit um, a little bit unorthodox for my one here. I'm going Chicago Cubs. Um, I think as— I love uh, you know, that pick. I love that pick, to be honest with you. You two, t- you know, you, you talked about some contenders, and as I don't know if I really see uh, the Cubs as a contender, they, they really—their front, front office really made— um, an effort to change the trajectory of their team, which you have to respect. I mean, they were hyper aggressive. Cody Bellinger, Trey Mancini, um, uh, Dansby Swanson, obviously. Uh, there's there's a couple more too. Yeah, Jameson Tyone, of course. Uh, Jameson Tyone. Like the if you're a Cubs fan and you win the World Series, and you know, I think they got Tucker Barnhart too. Yeah, Tucker Barnhart. And last year, Seiya Suzuki, like, they, they won the World Series, and you're like, okay, this is it for a bit. Like, they kind of, you know, Rizzo leaves, um, uh, you know, Brian leaves, and you're like, okay, where are we at now? And they just go hyper-aggressive in, in going after all these guys. They got Christopher Morrell, too, who's a great player. Um, so I really like what they did this offseason. I think they have a chance to actually compete and, um, you know, maybe even have a, a winning season uh, or, or a really good winning season. Um who the hell is going to pitch for the Cubs, bro? I mean, like, they have they, Marcus Stroman, Kyle Who's Hendricks, gonna throw innings for them? Boxberger. I mean, they they got some guys. Like they they, they don't have no one. You have some faith in you have some faith in Kyle Hendricks. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he'll 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 be decent. He's been decent in the past, but I mean, their lineup is pretty legit now. Like they they have a legit scary lineup with some MLB talent on it. So I I really respect uh, the Cubs for what they did because they could have just folded up and just you know gone with trying to build from the inside but they're like no screw that we we want to win now so i i gotta respect that yeah and if i can add a couple i mean they also isaac they also have hayden wasneski uh our yeah. prospect that we i was just gonna with. say i was just gonna say that um then their lineup is really deep uh you forgot to mention ian happ who was uh i think an all-star last year yes an all-star last year yeah I um that. patrick wisdom um 30 home run power uh they also picked up eric hosmer i don't think you mentioned him these guys I um, that they picked up have a lot of uh, upside. Uh, they have more upside than the Rangers lineup. Um, it's complete. Uh, they have a direction, unlike some other teams. I-, I love, I love your pick of the Cubs. Yeah, yeah. I really, I want to go like Yankees, Mets. You know, they also, I also, Philly, but like, I also hope they uh, they play their number one prospect, uh, Pete Armstrong Crow. I think his name is. He has some incredible, incredible skills. Um, he they, they they also have uh what's his name Nico Herner, incredible defensive shortstop. Um, they got players. Yeah, yeah, they have the talent. Julian, this is oh. very surprising for you guys today. I did not expect uh, all this Cubs hype. It's refreshing, of course. No one really thinks about the Cubs that much these days. They can but, compete. Um, maybe they can compete, but you have to consider you know with the changes in the schedule how that's going to affect the the teams the Cubs play. They're not playing. 38 games against the Pirates and Reds anymore. They now have to play every other team in the MLB. And do you really think they're stacking up with the, you know, the Braves and the Mets and the Padres and the good teams in the AL right now? That's no, no. I I, I know they're not weak and essential anymore. They're. I didn't claim that they were like you know a contender this year. I'm. They won the offseason. They won the offseason. You're saying they they went from they went from made the right calls exactly. They went from a pretty bad team. To you know, a team that has a lot of MLB talent that could be like you know team a fairy tale potential. story. Yeah, it could be a fairy tale story next year. You never know. So, like if they Almost get a so couple pitchers at the deadline, you never know what this team could be insane. So, yeah. Did you guys have? <clears throat> did you guys have like contending teams for for the top spot offseason winner? 
like another team I That's thought about was the not Blue Jays. Necessarily, you didn't have to. I thought of that. Yeah, I yeah, thought about the Blue Jays. I love their pickup of Bassett. Um, I don't know any other teams you guys wanted to mention. I mean, I would have said the Yankees. I mean, Aaron Judge and Rodon are pretty huge uh, pickups there, and Rizzo. I mean, that's I, I guess it's just retaining uh, two Tommy out of Canely. three. But Tommy Canley, that's true. He's he's a big piece. But yeah, I probably would have said um, yeah, I probably would have said those teams. All right, and uh, on the flip side of things, the teams that uh, didn't do so well, or maybe even hurt their chances, went from being a good team to a uh, not a good team. Uh, Ali, I'm gonna let you have this one first. Who do you have? What what, what team lost? What team lost the off season? Well, there are a few options for this. My first instinct was to say the White Sox, and that might be puzzling to hear because they did make some important moves. I just don't think they they were the right moves uh, for this team. They lost Jose Abreu, which we knew was going to happen, and I just don't believe that this uh, Benintendi combination is going to make up for what. Abreu, you know, what you lose with Abreu. Because yeah, no. you lose, you're the best bat on your team, the most consistent bat on your team with Abreu in the middle of your lineup. And at this point, you're just left with a lineup that's full of questions. This team's just built on questions right now, on the questions of Robert and Jimenez and Moncada. And there's no reliability there. Um, and for as, talent, as talented as their pitching staff still is, they could have used a clutch free agent signing. They could have very much used a Cueto return. They could have used... Uh, Tyler Anderson signing, they could have used even a Syndergaard signing, and they didn't make any of those moves. So they are short on dependability. I'm very nervous about the next year. I was very confident in 2021, and now I look at the White Sox, and I don't even want to don't even want to look at them. I don't even want to entertain hopes of success for them. Um, but that's that's a hot topic, because depending on how you feel about Benintendi, you might think that that was actually a dub for the White Sox picking him up. So it's going to be about how much you weigh these different moving parts and factors and positions. You guys might have different thoughts. No, no, I agree. I agree with you. I think the White Sox are missing one more big move that they didn't make. Um, It hurts that they picked up Clevenger. Uh, The news breaks that he's probably not going to pitch next year. Um, They do have some injuries coming up. In terms of the offseason moves, I think it's a little underwhelming, and I do agree with you. They're definitely one of the losers of the offseason. Okay. Ken, what's your pick? Do you want to go first? I think mine might take a little bit. All right. Uh, honestly, I, I know people are going to hate this, but I think San Francisco Giants are the losers. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. No, like, that's, that's they, that's a fact. They, if you're a San that's Francisco fact. Giants fan, you had so many things in your grasp. And to lose to lose two huge guys, Correa and Judge, like that, I mean, in the beginning of the offseason, all the rumors about, oh, I think Aaron Judge is going to San Francisco – and and then and and they had him. He's he's in the hotel. They're interviewing him. What are you doing in San Francisco? Um, and then the arson judge tweet turns out not doing very much. Yeah, not very much. Maybe <laughs> had a quick lunch left. Uh, back on the plane to talk to uh, Hal. But um, you know, such a disappointing year for them when the, when they really thought that oh man, we we just got Aaron Judge and 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 maybe we're gonna get Carlos Correa and then it goes from Aaron Judge and Carlos Correa to absolutely nothing and then you end up getting Mitch Haniger. Like that's just like. That's just like such a slap in the balls um, to to San Francisco Giants fans, and I kind of feel bad for him. Uh, one one of my good um, follows on Twitter is uh, your friend Kyle, who's an MLB The Show uh, YouTuber, and he's a huge Giants fan. Some of his tweets during that time were just absolutely hilarious. Um, <laughs> just a lot of Golden Gate, a lot of Golden Gate Bridge jokes, if you know what I mean. So, um, yeah, I San mean- Francisco Giants. Okay, yeah, I I see your point. I, they definitely didn't win the off season, but if I can counter, I don't think the Giants were the loser of the off season. Uh, I agree with a lot of your points, but it kind it's kind of you're, it's kind of based on fan perception and expectations they had going into it. I don't blame the Giants for backing out of the Correa situation. Um, he ends up getting two hundred million, like one hundred and fifty million less than what the Giants had in place. Uh, they do pick up Michael Conforto and Mitch Haniger, which solidifies their outfield. A, Two good power bats, um, and I didn't, I didn't expect Judge to go to the Giants, so I think their moves on the loan, they also picked up Sean Manaya to solidify their rotation. Obviously, they lost Rodon. They didn't win the offseason in any means, but I, I feel like people are giving them a little bit too much hate. Okay, what's your pick then? My pick... Okay, now before before I give my pick, I need Ollie to shut up for a good five minutes um, and just not start your rebuttal until I am completely finished with my statements. Um, 
my I, pick. My, yeah, I have a feeling I know where this is going. I feel like I know where this is going. Yeah, so my yeah, off season loser. Where could this loser, possibly be going? I, Ollie, please mute yourself. My off season lo- loser is the Boston Red Sox. Um, my biggest question with them is I don't know what they're doing, um, what direction they're headed. Um, they make such puzzling moves. Uh, they made moves like that a contending team makes uh, for a final piece of the puzzle type move veteran proven players on short term deals. But they're not nearly ready to win right now. Um, if they wanted to rebuild, they sh- I think they should rebuild. They have some young players in Tristan Cassis, Brian Bayo, their top prospect, Marcelo Mayer. But these guys are young. They're in their early 20s. Uh, Marcelo Mayer is in the rookie ball. Um, and Miguel Blyce, who's a 59th best MLB prospect, he's also in rookie ball. They got young talent to work around. I don't know why they're signing Justin Turner. They're signing uh, Corey Kluber. These are just puzzling moves that I don't know what they're because, doing. Because they're just trying to pass for a season. That's what I'm they're, saying. They're, that's, that's all they're going. doing. They're going season by season to sell so tickets. My, so if you would let me finish, I was saying, yes, so they're probably their plan is to probably just stay afloat, stay uh, relevant while the young guys are ready. But then why not just re-sign Ivaldi instead of go get Kluber? Why not just re-sign JD instead of Justin Turner? They signed for basically the same amount of money. So I don't know what you're doing. Their pitching is a me- their starting pitching is a mess. Um, I'll get into the Red Sox mess of starting pitchers in our uh, season See preview a video. Steam coming out of but, all these I mean, you Reese, your catcher's Reese McGuire. Why not just try- Reese McGuire jerks off in parking lots? Why not sign a catcher? <laughs> why not trade for uh, McCann from the Mets? Kike <laughs> Hernandez is at shortstop. Why are you letting your fan favorite Xander Bogarts leave? Um, you sign uh, Devers in a desperation move, but then you sign Duvall to play center field. This lineup is a joke. This starting pitching, I- I'm going to get into it. I mean, Sale's injury history is is really concerning. 5.2 innings last year. Last time he gave more than nine starts to you guys was four years ago, 2019. Kluber, he's 37, his first full season last year since 2018. You go to Pavetta, okay, solid innings eater. He probably be a number five on the Yankees. I'd probably rather have J- Domingo Herman. He had a 4-5 ERA the last two years. Paxton, oh, remember him, <laughs> Isaac? Paxton, his last season, uh, his last full season was with the Yankees. Has he's he thrown over 90 miles an hour? His, his, his last oh full God. season was four years ago as well. 34-year-old coming off of multiple shoulder and arm injuries. Whitlock, okay, he's a solid pitcher, but he's a small sample size. Nine games started last year. He, don't, he doesn't give you length. 4.3 innings per start. Um, he never pitched as a starter for a full season. Oh my besides, God, how much research did you do, never, you he asshole? He never pitched a full season besides 2018 with the Yankees minor league system in double, bl- double A. He's better in the bullpen. Oh okay, God. Brian. You did the minor league stuff. Okay, what the fuck that's is wrong the last time he threw 21 <laughs> starts. Okay, now we move on to Brian Bayo. He showed flashes of, a, of why he's this a top prospect, but he's not ready to give you 30 starts. He had a 4.71 ERA in 11 starts last year. 1.77 whip is... Like, I've never heard of that. They got Mondesi. They got Yoshida. They got Jansen. <laughs> they got Jansen, Turner, Kluber, uh, Duvall. Their bullpen is solid. I'm going to give give you props for the bullpen, but these moves that they made are win-now moves. Ryan and Brazier be like. <laughs> yeah, and they're nowhere near win-now, so I, I'm just puzzled. And they're Ollie, take the a, biggest okay, offseason okay. loser in the league. All right, okay. All right, that was crazy. Ali, take a deep breath. Maybe grab yourself a cup of tea. Uh, you know, secure your thoughts. Make sure they're concise, not just just you know hatred I, towards Ken. Uh, let, let's hear let's hear a rebuttal. Do you have a rebuttal to any of those points? You have no idea how much tea I've okay. been drinking. A lot, like eight cups a day to cope Jeez. to cope to cope Jeez. with this. So, so you agree? All right. So the first thing, I, the first number I want. I'm just gonna I'm gonna rebut not with like long boring sentences, but just with simple numbers. Okay. Here's my first number. The first number is this, 2.94. Ken probably knows what that number is. 2.94 I don't. is Brian Bayo's fielding independent pitching last year, which was in the top 10% of all pitchers with more than 50 innings last season. Okay, that's my first number. It's a good number. That's also my <laughs> only number. <laughs> no. Um, but that's to suggest, that sort of represents the one – thing you can say about the Red Sox is that you are underestimating um, the potential of their pitching staff. Can I pause you for a second? Now you might look at them. My argument, my okay. thesis is that the Red Sox had the worst offseason in the league. That doesn't, that has nothing to do with the offseason moves they made and why they're making these moves. It does. It does. It has everything to do okay. with that. Well, because you say, 
you're the set, the idea that they're the loser means they didn't do enough to redress the problems they had last season. That's what you're saying. You're saying they didn't <laughs> fill the holes. That I don't think I said any of that. Organization. Well, that's that's what's deeper. That's the deeper. All right, you know what? Hold on, hold on. Let me I don't mediate. Think he has let me mediate. Any points. Let me mediate. Let me mediate. What did you think of the Red Sox offseason? How about that? Did you think it was good? I think it was respectful. <laughs> it was. He lost his favorite effective. pitcher, favorite MLB player, and it's respectable. It was not. All right, let him talk. Him. Let him groundbreaking. Talk. It was not earth shattering. Certainly not. I would. I would say that. Yeah. Moves were made. They were. Uh, significant moves were made. Players were brought onto the team. Oh, uh, they, innings that were not available last season have been filled. Okay, these are very general. Uh, a bullpen statements, which was Ollie. disastrous. Baseball is a sport. That's not. You, you can admit that's not general. Uh, <laughs> um, look, this team had an absolutely terrible bullpen last season, and now you have four uh, plus options brought into the back end of that. And say we like about Corey Kluber, he is no longer an elite pitcher as he was, but he did. Uh, pitched the most innings, more innings last season than he has since like 2018. So it was his healthiest season in years. Uh, he's 36. Wow. To say he has nothing left would I think be a stretch. He did lead the American League and walked for nine innings last season. Had a nice yeah, but he's throwing whip. it down the middle and they're so crushing it. That's the issue. There is there is something to be I would said. Like if you walked more people, as a valuable less home runs. as a valuable veteran presence in this rotation okay. to help. Ease the transition to the new, to the young studs of the future, Brian Bayou and Garrett Whitlock, uh, who have a lot more potential than Ken is willing to admit because he's jealous that we have Whitlock and Bayou. He wishes that they were on the Yankees. The Yankees now are a team with serious pitching depth problems, but I'll get to that in the next video. Uh, other than this that, the definition of grasping at straws is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ali, you know what? You, so- you sound like you work for Red Sox PR right now. That's what you sound like. You are giving the most optimistic spin on. What I don't I don't agree with Ken that it was a disastrous offseason, but it definitely wasn't a good one. I don't know if I would have put them. Do you guys I, know how many times Justin Turner has been an All Star? Yes, but Twice. look at his numbers in the last <laughs> two years. I mean, you know how many times Miguel Cabrera has been an All Star? Doesn't mean he's great. Like, do you really think Turner is providing that much for you guys, Ali? Uh oh. Oh, he fake cut out. <laughs> oh, bye, Ali. He's struggling. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, oh, I'm breaking up. I'm breaking up. Okay. What's, so what's our next segment? Our next segment is surprises. And this is going to be our last segment for the day. Once we retrieve Ali back, we will get his picks. So we just have. Oh, I'm oh. Here. Red I'm Sox here. PR How is back. How anywhere. convenient. Anyway, time to do yes. surprises of the offseason. So then this next segment we talk about is the biggest surprises of Couldn't this have said it past much season. Better. And I'll begin. I mentioned them earlier. I mentioned Andrew Benintendi as the first one and also my boy Xander Bogarts. A couple of surprising moves that were made by big teams, but you heard me talk about them yeah. earlier. You probably don't want me to hear, hear me talk about them again. But I'll just mention briefly Benintendi. That came out of nowhere for me. I didn't see him getting five years with any team. and I didn't see him going to the White Sox who already have some young outfield options there. And Bogarts, I genuinely... Oh, 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 Ali. Oh, he's back. Oh, his I'm sorry, what's up? Ass. What, keeps, what keeps going on? You keep I don't know. disappearing. You guys are complaining about something. Oh, my bad. Okay, well, I said my piece about the surprises very quick, so now you guys go before I cut out again. Okay, Ken. Um, my pick is also someone we talked about uh, a little bit, so I'll keep this short. Uh, Xander Bogarts to the Padres was the biggest uh, surprise just because the Padres had an overabundance of middle infield to start with. They have, uh, obviously, Tatis coming back, and I'm surprised that they're moving him to the outfield for Xander Bogarts. Um, Hassan Kim was a great shortstop in the in the absence of Tatis last year. I, I get that Machado can opt out after next year, so it's kind of like an insurance insurance play, but... Still surprised me that the Padres of all teams were in on this. Am I a nerd that watched? Am I a baseball nerd that watched Xander Bogarts' press conference on the Padres? Yeah, and fucking Scott Boris was talking about when the Padres came calling to Scott Boris that he was surprised that they were talking about Xander Bogarts. Uh, he had a lot of he had a lot of clients um, like the like the pitching side of things that they, he thought that the Padres were calling about, but no, it was Xander Bogarts. So surprised Scott Boris surprised me. Biggest surprise of the offseason. Wow. Okay. Uh, I I have two as well. My first one is Justin Verlander. 
I really thought Verlander was staying was staying in Texas. Uh, everything's bigger in Texas. We talked about that, Kate Upton. Kate, um, Kate yeah, we're, uh, Texas is going to miss you. So I was pretty surprised. I mean, once the Grom left, I, I thought the Mets were going to maybe get some younger guys or some talent, but they were like, nope, screw that. We're going to replace one expensive injury-prone starter with another expensive old injury-prone starter. Um, obviously, I'm being mean to Justin Verlander, but like he's obviously still a stud. But I was pretty shocked that the Mets did that. Um, did not think that that was the direction they were going. And I had one more... Uh, Verlander was also my sneaky second uh, surprising behind Bogarts. Where was my other pick? I guess I didn't have another pick. All right. Hmm. Oh, 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 Jameson Tyone to Chicago. I was pretty surprised they gave him 70 mil. That's pretty insane amount of money for a guy who can't strike anyone out. What would you have? What did I have for Tyone? I had uh, Boston. Boston for two years, 26 mil, 13 AAV. He got 17 AAV. Yuck. If I, I'm... Kind of glad the Yankees didn't pay him, even though he's a really great guy. Um, really, really handled the New York media well, but yeah, Verlander to the Mets is wild. All right, proudest guesses. This is uh, gonna be my favorite segment, seeing as I won with some of the you know pretty insane picks. But you know, I'll swing it to the third place gentleman first to see if he if he even had any proud guesses. Because honestly, <laughs> I don't know. With seven with seventeen points, I don't know if you can really be proud of that. But Ali. Proudest guesses. Kenley Jansen to the Red Sox. Um, you guys didn't see that one. But I had a feeling that Kyle Bloom would go for Kenley, go for that veteran closer. I'm very proud of that. Okay. Um, you wanna, you wanna, not the best signing they could have made, but I'm proud of that. You want to tell us what yeah. the prediction was and what he signed for? Yeah, I predicted um, three years, $36 million to the Red Sox. And they signed him for two years at 32 to the Red Sox. So I got two out of the three categories locked up. But all of us underestimated his AAV. We all said between 12 and 15, he wound up getting 16. So good for Kenley. Still getting that money at age, what, 37? Yeah. 34. Yeah, that's that's a good pick. I, I did not see him going to Boston. I'll say that. I had him going to um, right back to uh, ATL. So, Ken, proudest moments. Yeah, so I think my proudest moment is, uh, my proudest pick is getting Jamison Tyone right. I think it says something when our host is talking about Jamison Tyone as the biggest surprise, and I kind of called it. Um, you said he, you didn't see him getting 17 million. I had him for 15 million per year. Um, total value is 60 million. So if you look at, um, both of your predictions, you can see how off you guys were compared to what he signed for two for 26 for Isaac, two for 22 for Ollie. I had him four for 60. I, I knew the value of pitchers who give you innings in, in the high three ZRA 14 and five last year. I think, Isaac's hate is kind of overshadowing how good he actually was. Pitchers like that don't come around very often. He's a very solid pitcher. He's obviously not a one or two, but he can give you innings uh, three, four, five. You don't think he's a one or two? No, he's not a one or two. No. Um, but he's a solid solid middle of the rotation innings eater that gives you quality innings. He's not like the... He'd be a one or two on the Yankees. Like, what, like, that's not even funny. I, I, that's not even funny. That's I don't like think actually we can... <laughs> that's a dumbass you, comment. I'm pretending like I didn't hear that. We have like a 12-year-old Red Sox fan in our you know, <laughs> yeah. Let's look at how many home runs Garrett Cole gave up last season. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. 30. So yeah, James oh Tyone definitely was uh, was my proudest moment. What about okay. yours, Isaac? You won. I mean, I I, I got a pick from a long list, but I'm going to I'm going to just give two that I'm proud of cuz I got the first one I got Why do you everything get to get right. I got everything right, and the second one, I got the team right. <laughs> so I'm going Jose Abreu, 3 for 60 to the Houston Astros, $20 million a year. The actual contract was 3 for $58.5 million, 19.5. So I was off by half a million uh, in the AAV and three, um, I mean two math. and quick a half. Quick math, quick <laughs> math. <laughs> <laughs> ah! do it. And two and a half in the... Um, uh, um, in the money I overall. I hate fractions. But, um, yeah, I was really proud of Jose Abreu. I, I, I knew it the whole way. Once Gurriel was uh, looking looking not too good anymore, I had a feeling they, they wanted to uh, get another first baseman. So, um, yeah, I guess that all right. And that was in green. And then Can I correct from you downtown, what? Can I cr- not two and a, you're off by one and a half million. Oh, you're right. You're right. Sorry. I'm actually an Quick economics correction. major, and I do math all the time. It's kind of pathetic. Right, what's your second pick? From downtown, Joshua Bell to the Cleveland Guardians. What a freaking guess. Um, these boys had Houston Astros, Milwaukee. I got, what, what are we even talking about here? He's, he's, Cleveland needed home run hitters, and that's exactly what they got. I got 
His contract AAV is 16.5. I get 16.6. It don't get much better than that. It don't get much better than that. And I predict the team too. So um, I just want to say um, it's it's been a pleasure beating both of you. And um, I don't know what I would have done if I didn't win, but I guess we'll never know. And um, <laughs> if, right, we had, if we, oh wait, I, I don't want to quote Kanye. Actually, that's probably a, probably a bad look. Can maybe well, we got uh, two of the three guys on here getting canceled on the show. Guys, I'm Jewish, so like, you can't, you know. <laughs> and I'm that's brown, exactly bro. I'm literally Palestinian, said. dude. Bro, that's exactly what Kanye I'm a said. Palestinian I'm man. I'm Hebrew, I was so born it on a camel. Count. Oh man. Oh no, what have I done? But yeah, Can Josh I, Bell. I Josh born. Bell. Woo! <laughs> I'm going to pat me and Isaac on the back here. I'm going to give another name, Andrew Benintendi, real quick. We both had the Chicago White Sox, so, Ollie. You guys didn't. Go suck Bull, it. No, you didn't. Go suck it, Ollie. Oh, my God, you did. What? How did you call the White and Sox? We're both both one million, and we're both back and changed And we're both did. And we're both one million away on money, too. Ollie, you. That's because all Isaac does is just copy Ken's picks. Hey, thanks, Ollie. <laughs> Okay, Thanks for playing, all right, though. All right. So, guys, if you want to take a look at our guesses and where where all these free agents... Do you agents, think Isaac could name all 30 teams? Where where um <laughs> all these free agents He's bringing landed. up irrelevant points because he's getting bashed on so much. It's okay, Ollie. Okay. Are you talking about me right I'm now? I'm talking about you. <sighs> guys, I'm trying to wrap this up. Come on. Uh, this spreadsheet, I think Ken can um, drop it in the links below so you guys can go take a look at it if you want to see where all these top 25 free agents landed, the money they got, the years they got, the AAV that translates to, all that good stuff. Um, do you got anything else to say, boys? Anything else? Can you believe Jacoby Ellsbury did not make it into the Hall of Fame? I mean, what a travesty. Ken Suzuki, anything else? What a miscarriage of I do want to hear one last Ali G impersonation before we leave. Uh, I'm gonna so have take to us out with Ali G. Hey, I'm Ali G, could you, could you close for the close of the show yeah. for us? Thank you. So I had to show Ken who Ali G was today. So unfortunately, he does not get another impression. That'll Ollie. be all from us today. Ali, uh, a.k.a. Hey. Ali G, can oh. you close the show? No, no, no. You know how it is, mate. You had a great show here today. It's not at love all. Love baseball. Man. Love football. It's not really how it's he sounds. terrible. Terrible. <laughs> I'm better doing Borat. Leave in the comments. What's up? What's up with it, Vanilla Face? <laughs> Leave in the comment section who had the better impersonation, and Isaac will take us out until next time. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. We will have plenty of content coming soon as the season draws closer. Ali is going to go find a bridge. Um, so tired. And we are out for now. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we will see you guys later. Peace. Nice knowing you, Ollie.